Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video we'll talk about horizontal stretches and shrinks. In the last video for vertical stretches, the constant that we were multiplying was outside the main function. So it wasn't being squared in x squared, it was being multiplied by x squared. But if the value uh, that we're multiplying by is inside the function, then it applies either a stretch or a shrink to the graph in the horizontal direction. And it works kind of backwards from uh, what we were seeing in the last one. A value smaller than one actually stretches it out to the side. A value bigger than one pulls it in towards the middle. And we'll take a look at both. Um, on the graph, I've got the points associated with the graph f of x equals x squared. Now I want to take a look at the graph of one-third x raised to the second power. So, um, you know, I can multiply, um, I can multiply each x by one-third and then square them. So for instance, and I'm going to do this in red for the new function, negative two-thirds squared is four-ninths. But um, I can see that it's going to be somewhere around here on the graph, negative two and a little less than halfway up. But that's not going to really get me much in terms of graphing. So what I'd like to do instead is focus on the values where one third x are the values negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So if one third of x is negative two, that means that x is negative six. And when I put in negative six into this function, one third of negative six is negative two, negative two squared is four. So negative six, four, take a look at what's happening here. This point is being pulled outside, right? It's being stretched outside of the main function. Um, if one third of x is negative one, basically we're gonna multiply all these values by three to figure out what x is. So when x is negative three, we get a result of one. And again, that point's pulled out some. Zero, zero is still gonna be the same. When x is three, we get a result of one. Again, being pulled towards the outside, stretching this graph out. And finally, when x is six, we get a result of four. So if you think about the original function, which I will now finish drawing in black, one third x raised to the second power stretches it out by a factor of three. Each point is three times as far away from the y-axis as it was before. Now, depending on which way you look, right, this is like a half full, half empty glass kind of thing. You could also think of it as if the graph is being pulled down because this function really is the same as 1 9th times x squared. So it's really um, a vertical shrink of 1 9th, but we can also think of it as a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. The next problem, we're gonna look at the absolute value of x and the absolute value of two x. So first, let me put the points on for the absolute value function. And when, if we want 2x to be negative 2, that's when x is equal to 1. I'm sorry, negative 1. The absolute value of negative 2, actually, let me clean that up a bit. The absolute value of 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, that's 2. So that's the point, negative 1. Two. And I'm going to graph that in red. I should have been using red all along. Negative one, two. The next value we would plug in would be negative one half. Two times negative one half is negative one. The absolute value is one. So one half. 
And what's really happening here is these points, and let me blow this up for just a minute, are being pushed in. We're also going to get one here and here. So if I blow this back up, it's being shrunken by a factor of uh, one half. Those points are half as far away from the y-axis as the original function was. We could also think of this, though, as 2 times the square root of x. And so we could also see that each point is 2 times higher than some point on the graph. Uh, the horizontal and vertical shifts and uh, stretches kind of go hand in hand. just depends on the way you're looking at them.